I'm Jane, County Enterprise Foods Team Manager. We were established in 1987 and the reason behind it was to make meals for our own Meals on Wheels service, but also to provide employment for people who would find it difficult to find work mainstream. So that is people with either a learning or a physical disability. We give them independence and we promote their well-being. We work alongside them, supporting them in the workplace, but also holistically. It isn't just coming to work and being a number. And they are very, very proud of the job that they do and how well they do it, and rightly so. Um, they have won awards for the work that they do and, and you know, it, it builds their confidence to feel valued. I'm Jane and I work at County Enterprise Foods and I've worked here for 29 years and I really enjoy it. <laughs> I, I used to be... Uh, a very shy person. I, I, I've grown a lot of confidence while, I, while I've been working here. When you walk through the door, no visitor goes away without saying how nice the feel is here because it's a very different kind of workplace to work where you are continually supporting staff as well as doing your job. The other part of our work is to provide a nutritious, well-balanced meal. We produce over 2,000 meals a day and our team take great pride in everything that they do to get the best product. The health and well-being of the customers is really important. We use uh, locally uh, sourced ingredients when we can. So we keep everything fresh. We've got 90% of the fresh vegetables here as well. In combination with the fresh cooked meats, we have a good nutritional balance to the meals, which is essential. The food that we have can be traced back to the farm, so it very much is a farm to fork process. After the production of the meals, they come down to our distribution unit here at Rainworth and we have 19 vehicles go out every day to deliver throughout the whole of the county. We have a freezer route, but the majority go out hot in our vehicles with the oven in the back of the van. The service we provide is essentially the good nutritious meal that people get and as well as the customer getting a hot meal or a frozen meal, whichever is their choice, we have safe and well checks and this is part of our way of helping people remain independent. Hello. Hello. Hi Gwen, I bought you dinner. Right, I'll tell you Here we are, Thank okay. you. how are you today? It's good for the families, it gives the families peace of mind we're turning up on a daily basis and checking on, on their relatives and making sure that they're fine. And with us knowing the clients as well as we do, with us coming every day, we can, we can normally tell if something's wrong straight away. I'm Gwendolyn and I'm 91 years of age. And Okay, thank you very much. We are live. Um, I'd like to welcome you all to this meeting of the Communities in Place, which is being held remotely with the majority of the 11 members joining the meeting from their own homes. As well as myself, the other members present for the meeting today are Councillor Pauline Allen, Councillor Jim Creamer, Councillor Glyn Guilfoyle, Councillor Kevin Greaves, Councillor John Handley, Councillor Tom Hollis, Councillor Vaughan Hopewell, Councillor Bruce Lawton, Councillor John Ogle, and Councillor Phil Rostens. 
We also have Councillor Gordon Wheeler as Chairman of Communities and Place Review and Development Committee. He's also in attendance. Welcome, Councillor Wheeler. And we also have the following officers present today. Adrian Smith, Corporate Director, Place. Derek Higton, Service Director, Place and Communities. Doug Cooks, Managing Director, East Midlands, via East Midlands. Gary Wood, Group Manager, Highways and Transport. Sue Jakes, Flood Risk Manager. Sean Parks, Local Transport Plan Manager. Mark Walker, uh, as apologies. Mark Bar Mike Barnett, Team Manager, Major Projects and Improvements, and the clerk to the meeting, Noel McManaman. Um, this is the first virtual meeting of Communities and Place Committee to be held in line with the new requirements of the Coronavirus Act 2020. So please bear with us if we experience any technical issues. And also from the chair's position, as it's the first meeting I've uh, chaired from uh, communities in place uh, online. If we do lose any members from the call temporarily, then officers will seek to assist in getting them reconnected as soon as possible, hopefully without the need to halt the proceedings. Officers will inform the meeting if they are unable to rectify the problem, and if we need the meeting to be paused or adjourned temporarily, we will do. There is unavoidable double numbering in the agenda papers, and I would ask that members refer to agenda pack page numbers during the discussions. So I now move to item one on the agenda. And item one is to note the appointment by full council on the 11th of June 2020 of Councillor John Cotty as chairman of the Council uh, of, Communities, of Communities and Place Committee and Councillors John Handley and Councillor Phil Rostens as Vice Chairman of the Committee for 2020 to 2021. Um, I'm, I'm asking you to note that, so thank you. Item two is to note the membership of the committee for the 2020-2021 municipal year as follows. Councillors Allen, Creamer, Guilfoyle, Greaves, Hollis, Hopewell, Launton and Ogle. Item three is the minutes of the last meeting held on March the 5th. I want to ask the committee if they're happy with the minutes from the previous meeting. Any issues that anybody has with the minutes? Thank you. Um, I, I approve the minutes and I will sign them at the end of the meeting. Item four is apologies for uh, um, absence. Can I ask the clerk, please, if there are any apologies? Uh, no apologies received, Chair. Thank you very much. Item five, declarations of interest. Do any members or officers present have any disclosable pecuniary interest to declare? Or do any members or officers present have any private interests, pecuniary or non-pecuniary, to declare? So are there any declarations of interest, please? No, thank you very much. So we move to item six, which is flood risk management section 19 reports. And I would like to ask um, Sue Jakes if she would like to present those papers, please. Thank you, Sue. Thanks, Chair. Um, so this report sets out the County Council's duties as a lead local flood authority to report on flooding incidents under section 19 of the Flood and Water Management Act. These section 19s are brought in relation to the significant flooding that occurred over the weekend of the 15th and 16th of February as a result of Storm Dennis. So this storm saw us contending with 90 mile an hour winds, uprooting of trees and a real severe disruption to the highway network. In addition to an average month's rain falling in 48 hours, 29 communities in Nottinghamshire reported incidents of flooding to us with over 200 of those very sadly being verified as being internally flooded. Since the flooding in February I am pleased to say that the areas for which we are the local the lead uh, risk management authority responsible for mitigation measures we've commenced those works and we've also worked very closely with our partners the Environment Agency and Network Rail to ensure that they are too moving forward with mitigation measures. Tragically, last month saw torrential downpours and flash flooding hit Broxtow, Rushcliffe and Ashfield. 
we had 61 residential properties and 55 businesses in Beeston and Ruddington devastated by the flash flooding. A significant issue here which made a difference was uh, in Beeston and Ruddington was bow waves caused by traffic driving too quickly through the floodwaters and those businesses being located very close to the carriageway. As ever, flood risk management team will continue to work with our partners and the most vulnerable in the community will be our priority. Areas which have been previously flooded and reported through committee, um, a progress update will be brought in September by our partners, including the uh, Environment Agency. So our ask of committee today, please, is to approve the recommendations of the report and the publishing of these Section 19 reports in line with current legislation. Thanks, Chair. Councillor Cotty, uh, you're on mute at the moment. I was, I was just testing you to see if you could not hear me. My apologies. So before I move to que questions, I'm going to propose the recommendation. So question, um, recommendation one is committee approves the publishing of the section 19 report appendices A to K in accordance with section 19 of the Flood and Water Management Act 2010 and our lead local flood authority responsibilities. Recommendation two is the committee endorse the work outlined in the report. Question th uh, recommendation three is committee encourages all agencies involved to seek and implement suitable measures to alleviate flood flooding as soon as reasonably possible. Recommendation four is the capital funding program for flood protection be included in the regular six month flooding update report to communities and place committee in October. And recommendation five, that officers provide updates to committee on all relevant agencies progress with alleviation measures as part of the regular flood risk management updates. So I will propose that recommendation and have a seconder, please. I'll second Thank that, you. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Rostens. Um, that when you speak, I would appreciate if you could ask you, all your questions if you can, um, as we're clicking in and out of things, and it'll probably make the meeting rooms move smoother. So the first person uh, I can see is Councillor Hollis, if you'd like to speak, Councillor Hollis. Thank you, Chair, and thank you to Sue for presenting the report. Uh, and I think when, when we're talking about flooding, and, and I think, I mean, Ashfield is by far not the worst affected district in, in many ways, just by the various geography uh, of our district. Um, but I think like all members, we, we do have severe flooding problems. And I think, um, as I think Sue made quite clear, we aren't the only authority that deals with flooding and with responsibility for our area, but we are the lead authority in many ways. And when it comes to flooding, a lot of the stuff we talk about is reactionary. Somewhere gets flooded, that highlights the problem, we fix it. Um, it happens regularly in new build estates. For example, in my own division of Mill Lane, uh, we built, and um, the council built a we're talking 10 15 years ago a brand new estate next to an old tip um built all the homes and then all the homes got flooded the next year and then the county council quite rightly worked with the developer to install um, flood prevention my concern is is the incident that happened on Thorsby dale in Huckle, um, well publicized recently and our local councillor councillor john wilmot has been on complaints. I mean, I think it's been named for, uh, Thorsby Dale Lake uh, recently. That was somewhere that we identified as a problem. The County Council spent half a million on faulty flood prevention equipment to the point that it was rendered almost useless when the flooding happened again. Um, my question quite bluntly is, why did the County Council spend half a million pounds on Thorsby, Thorsby Dale flood prevention, which I can imagine is one of the more expensive projects? Um, for the for it not to work and how can you ask me to put faith in um, future works when we've seen that be spent and it not work um, and um, obviously there's further details in in the press and from local residents who've complained directly to the county council thank you chair thank you councillor hollis um i'm not sure that that was in the report but i don't mind you asking that question if uh, sue's happy to answer it so 
Yeah, very happy to answer that one. So very tragically, Thorsby Dale was affected um, a while ago now by a second bout of flooding. Um, it was caused by a severe blockage that had entered uh, the system and that was now cleared and we worked tirelessly with VIA and with Seven Trent Water to clear that blockage. Um, and as far as I know, uh, there has been no further instance and it was, it was just tragically one of those things that there'd been a lot of water and something quite significant had got stuck in the system. Unfortunately, riparian owners and um, people uh, tend to dump rubbish in watercourses and if we don't keep on top of that and those responsibilities aren't pursued then those blockages enter the system and they cause everybody a significant problem. Thank you very much Sue. Uh, Councillor Pauline Allen please, you indicated to speak. No, you just you were waving to tell me I hadn't put the microphone on. <laughs> I presume. Yeah, I was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I've got Councillor John Ogle. Yes, I can't see him. Glenn, did you wish to ask a question? Oh, is, is that John coming on? Councillor Ogle is rejoining the meeting in a moment. Okay, he's gone, he's coming back in a minute. Uh, Councillor Guilford, did you wish to say anything? Well, I will just on the bit because obviously uh, what's been said is that half a million pounds worth of uh, flood prevention stuff didn't work. I mean, clearly what you've just said so is that there was uh, a blockage elsewhere. Um, so are we saying then, uh, to your knowledge then, that the, the stuff that has been put in should, under normal circumstances, prevent flooding in that area? Because I think that's the question uh, in reality. And I know sometimes you can't give an 100% guarantee, but clearly, you know, members need to know that. From, uh, if I can come back on that, from our experience with all the severe flood events that we've had uh, over, since that scheme was implemented, we've had one incident and that was due to a blockage. So as far as we are aware, it is fully functioning and fit for purpose. Thank you. So, for that. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I've got Councillor Bruce Lawton. Thank you, John. That's a bit quicker than what I thought it was. It is the easiest thing in the world to blame a, um, a system that is put in place to alleviate flooding when it fails. The, on numerous occasions, you've just got to look at some of these Section 19 reports to see the debris which is clogging up uh, our watercourses. My suggestion is, um, Tom, that you, when you ha have a chat with the local member, that he sets up a, um, some form of flood forum with the parish council or whatever to ensure that there is a accurate monitoring system of the watercourses in that area to ensure they're properly cleaned out. And let me give you an example. Uh, Newark IDB were on the greet, cleaning the greet out um, uh, four days ago, um, and they cleaned the greet out where there have been blockages created by people throwing stuff in the watercourses. And this is a significant issue right the way across the whole of Nottinghamshire. There is a solution to that problem, and it's local maintenance, uh, uh, the, the the local um, sort of assessing of maintenance requirements on water courses in your in, in your area uh, and it's something that's been set up by the South for Flood Forum and if you wish you you can also speak to Rob Fisher as well uh, and he will help set up a, um, a, a system uh, similar to many other areas across Nottinghamshire. Thank you John. Thank you Bruce. Um, I've any other people to speak we've got John Ogle lost at the moment um, Councillor Kevin Greaves, please. Thank you. And I've got Councillor Gordon Wheeler afterwards. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, as Worksop has seen devastating floods in uh, last November, on the, uh, on the 7th of November, that is, uh, last year, where 400 plus properties and businesses in Worksop <laughs> flooded out. Uh, get it, uh, uh, obviously, uh, flash flooding is a problem. 
uh, we need to be flood ready. That is a fact. Uh, only recently, uh, with the heavy downpours, we're seeing uh, areas in my ward which come very, very close uh, to being flooded out with uh, surface water, uh, not river Call water, area. what oh. was in uh, November, but by surface water. But what we need to be doing, we need to be flood ready and making sure that a lot of our gullies, which I've reported in blocked, need to be cleaned out at a regular, uh, uh, regular intervals and checked. And also we need to be checking with farmers and landowners that the runoff from fields is also kept in, in check. Uh, so we need to be more than flood ready nowadays with the climate change, obviously there's a climate change as you can see is happening and uh, we need to be completely flood ready. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Greaves. Do you wish to say anything, Sue, or do you, do you want to come in on that? Uh, I, I perhaps defer to Vyer on that one as it was Gullies. Yeah, OK. All right. Thank you. Um, Councillor Gordon Wheeler, then, please. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you, John. Much appreciated. Uh, very briefly, we've also got flooding in, uh, in, my, in my division. I'm not just be parochial, but what I want to say is on Wednesday of next week, We've got Callum Smith, I think she, Callum works on your team, Sue, I think, and together with the District Council, we're actually, it's a joint up meeting with the residents to try to understand the problem. This is really what's so important, to understand what the issues are, what's causing the wolf, what's causing the problem. Because when it rains heavily, it runs right across a rain road, rugby road, and literally floods are close. But the good thing is we're working together, and I want, to, I want members to understand that it's a good news story for bringing together both the council and the district and members to try and identify the problem and then, of course, try and work up solutions. Thank you, John, for your indulgence. Thank you, Gordon. Um, we've still lost John Ogle, but he's on the phone to Keith at the moment, Keith Ford. Um, we're trying to reinstate him back up onto the meeting. Um, so I'll go to Councillor Phil Rostens, who said he would like to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cotty. Um, yeah, just to go back um, before I do uh, go on to the, the main the main bulk of the uh, the report, just onto the the Thorsbury Dale because that is in in Hucknall, uh, and just to give some reassurances to to Councillor Hollis that um, we now have teams looking at, at Dob Park that we believe is a problem where that's holding water. Uh, also, the Baker Street Brook um, area. Uh, checking, main, maintaining that, ensuring that uh, is free of blockages. Um, we've also, underneath the main inner relief road, there was an overflow section that was possibly causing some problems. So we've increased the size of that overflow. So that will direct the water uh, a different path. So hopefully we're, we're on top of everything on Thorsby Dale from now on and we'll keep a close eye on it. Um, but I just want to acknowledge that, again, the hard work of Sue and the team uh, for these Section 19 reports. When the Section 19 reports came to the last committee, we said that sometimes these could take up to a year to, to get through. And again, we've done them in a matter of months. So again, thank you, Sue and the team, for, for all the hard work that you've done on this. And, and just to let everybody know that we remain committed to, to all those affected by the flooding. Uh, and we'll keep working with, with all the other authorities to ensure that um, we're doing all we can to support them. And if anybody's got any further questions on their particular areas that are flooded, uh, Sue has uh, indicated that she's more than happy to speak to everybody outside of the meeting uh, with any issues that they want to raise with her directly. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, I'm on, yes. Thank you, Councillor Rostens, uh, for that. And I would also like to uh, thank Sue and the team for all the work they've done. Uh, I have seen some of the things that they've been out and doing and appreciate the speed in which these reports have been produced. And I, I know that in September, I think we have um, Ruddington and Beeston coming. And again, it'll be done in record time, I think. So really thank you to your staff. So if you pass that back, please. Does anybody else wish to speak? I can't see you all, but I could see a hand if it comes up. Ah, Doug Coots has signalled. Are you looking to speak at all, Doug? Uh, yes, please, Chair. Uh, Thank you. I just, um, I'd just like to um, add um, to the point made by Councillor Graves. Um, I, I think it, it's a fair point about getting flood ready. Uh, as we all know, there are a number of complex uh, factors involved quite often. Um, and again, Councillor Wheeler is well aware of this. We have problems with the capacity of the system that the gullies flow into. Um, we do have 
uh, a red amber green system already in place for gullies uh, and we do go and look at the, the reds if you like in advance of flood warnings etc but i'm very happy to work with councillor greaves to check that we've got the right ones for his area if he feels there are some that are uh, constantly a problem to make sure that they're already on our red list thank you very much doug okay um anybody else wish to speak uh, Adrian, sorry, Adrian Smith. Oh no, okay, okay. We'll move to the vote then. Um, so, Councillor Ogle, although he's still not back on, he's talking to Keith Ford and has indicated that he will vote in favour of the recommendations. But I have to ask you in this order: any votes against? I don't think I can see any. Are we okay with that, Noel? Okay, thank you. Then that's unanimous. Thank you very much, Sue. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, members. Okay. We move to item seven, which is the Highways Capital and Revenue Programme. And can I ask Sean Parks to present the report, please? Thank you, Chair. Uh, the purpose of this report is to seek committee approval for the 55 million highways programmes to be delivered during 2020-21 and to update committee on the current um, transport funding sources and these programs are set out within the report whilst we aim to deliver all of these programs during 2020 2021 uh, committee will appreciate that they are likely to be affected by existing and future covid 19 safeguarding measures which are considered necessary to protect the public and employees but will obviously keep affected members informed of any programs or schemes that aren't deliverable during this financial year and we'll look to deliver those in future years if possible. With regards to the appendices, could I highlight a correction that needs to be made? Um, whilst yep. the funding de amounts detailed in the main report are correct, an error was made in the table at the top of Appendix 1 to the report, which is the Highways Maintenance Programme. It's actually page 117 of the agenda pack, if anyone wants to look it up. Um, the total funding available for mechanised patching and member schemes, it's the 12th line down in the table at the top, is actually higher than shown. It's 8.832 million, not 7.501 million as shown. And correspondings, correspondingly, the total funding amount for all of the categories in that table increases by 1.331 million to 27.87 million. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and the recommendations are set out on pages 9, 10 of the report, which I think is page 113 of 114. Thank you very much, Sean. Before we uh, take any questions, um, I would like to propose these recommendations. At recommendation one, approve the proposed capital maintenance programme for implementation as contained in this report and detailed in Appendix 1, with the amendments that uh, Sean has mentioned. Approve the proposed integrated transport block for implementation as contained in this report and detailed in Appendix 2. Recommendation three is to approve the proposed highway traffic management revenue program for implementation as contained in this report and detailed in appendix three and approve the road safety education training and awareness programs as contained in this report and detailed in appendix four. And recommendation five is to approve the proposed consultation and information provision required to deliver each of the schemes and the work programs detailed in this report and its appendices. So I'd like to formally move that recommendation, please. I have a seconder. I'll second that, Chairman. Thank you very much, Councillor Rostens. And go out to members now. Any questions? Councillor Hollis. Thank you, Chairman, and uh, thank you for the report again. Um, truthfully, I, I, I have difficulty having faith in the capital programme. Um, for, for, a sim for a very simple reason, the 2019-2020 the capital programme, there were a number of projects that were listed for completion that haven't been completed. To my minimum knowledge, there was 35 projects still yet to be completed, some of them considered urgent works. 26, um, surprise, surprise, a large share of that were in the Ashfield district. Um, and frankly, Mr Chairman, I feel the Conservative Party has lied to local residents. You know, they've written out to these residents to say that these roads are going to get done within a certain time frame. That time frame has now passed and um, these roads still aren't done. Um, so, frankly, I don't really see the point, and I certainly can't support this agenda item today, 
because I have absolutely zero faith that these projects will be completed. Uh, and Mr Chairman, I think it's important when I, as an opposition member, when I claim something to provide the evidence. So very briefly and as quickly as possible to highlight to the committee works that have been approved in last year's programme but then haven't been completed. Um, the B6018 Park Lane, Kirkby and Ashfield, not completed. Thorsby Avenue, Kirkby and Ashfield, not completed. Lime Tree Avenue, Kirkby and Ashfield, not, not completed. Gray Street, um, Kirkby and Ashfield, which was resurfacing. I won't go into the detail of the reports. But Abbey Road, Kirkby and Ashfield, works not completed. Glenside, not completed. Poplar Avenue, St Andrews Street, Kirkby and Ashfield, Alexandra Street, Frederick Street, Sutton in Ashfield, North Street, Sutton in Ashfield. Uh, Bramley Court, Wild Hill, Chesterfield Road, Russell Street, Hill Crescent, Skegby, Mansfield Road, Selston, Main Road, Jacksdale, Astley Close and Forest Close. I mean, I've had Councillor Madden on to me this morning about these two streets, particularly in Annesley Woodhouse. Urgent works that were meant to be completed in last year's programme, still not completed. Annesley Cutting, Byron Road, Christchurch Road, Hucknall. Lean, Lean Mills Lane, Hucknall. I mean, the residents are in up in arms with Councillor Wilmot about those. South Street, Hucknall. York Street, Hucknall. Vine Terrace, Hucknall. Woodstock Street, Shortwood, Farley's Lane, Glenwood Drive, Lilac Road, Larch Close, Laburnum Grove, Hucknall, Cedar Grove, Hucknall, Holly Close and Acacia Close, Hucknall, Mr Chairman. They are all streets to, that I can prove were in the last programme that have not been completed and then now we're presented with a, a further list that you ask us to put faith in. And some of the works, truthfully, we're, we're welcome. I think, as Mr. and I think you'll allow me one slight murmur that I'll always be frustrated that we're spending so much on Trent Bridge and less in Sutton in Ashfield and Kirkby. But I know we have a disagreement about that, Mr. Chairman. But the main the main crux of this matter for me is I don't trust this report. And I don't have any faith that these works are going to get completed in the same way that the report that you approved last time has not been completed is my main point. And I hope that can be addressed. And then the second thing to say um, with regards to the capital programme, I'd have hoped this could have been brought forward during COVID. Uh, I know we've heard from the officers that you know it's not, not been possible, but Ashfield District Council have been able to carry out all our services. So, for example, probably the most corresponding service is our grounds maintenance and bin service. We've been able to send our men and machines out every day without fail. We've not missed a single bin, a single collection anywhere in the district um, out of the normal. And I don't understand why effectively for probably an eight or 10 week period, every day was a Sunday traffic wise, that particularly some of the main roads that cost us thousands of pounds and caused great disruption to resurface and close. We couldn't have brought some of those projects forward. And although I can kind of relate to the third point on the agenda item with regards to some of the side streets, that um, of course we are going to have to be cautious doing loud noise outside people's properties when they might be working from home. Um, I do feel that it's been a missed opportunity not to carry out and bring forward some of these capital works during a very quiet period on the roads where surely social distancing could have been organised for the works to be completed. Um, thank you, Mr Chairman. Well, thank you for that, Councillor Hollis. Um, I'm pleased to know that Councillor Wilmot is now the county councillor for that area, because uh, I don't see he shouldn't be dealing with the roads. It should be the county councillor for the area that should be dealing with it and not being undermined by district councillors trying to do county councillors' jobs. Well, um, so I, I'm, not, I'm talking now, <laughs> Councillor Hollis. I'm not asking you to come back in. You've had about 10 minutes talk. You talk about all the works that weren't done. And in the previous item, item six, you were going on about the flooding. We had flooding in June last year. We had flooding in September last year. We've had flooding at the beginning of this year. We've also had something called the coronavirus where we've had to work to the government guidelines, which means distancing of two meters. When we've sent workers out to do jobs that they can do, they have to go in separate vehicles. So instead of going in one vehicle, they're going in three or four. And um, your comments about Trent Bridge is another one of your unfounded, unknowledgeable whinges. Because I have to say to you, we have no choice. We have to make sure Trent Bridge is safe with the city council. We do. It goes back to 1600 and something. You can shake your head all you like, Councillor Hollis. You just want to believe what you want to believe. 
£600,000 that we're putting in, we have to do that. We have a statutory obligation to ensure Trent Bridge is safe, unlike another bridge in the county, which we're not responsible for, but that's a different matter. So you chirping on about not doing your roads, a load of my roads haven't been done, a load of other roads haven't been done because of this flooding situations and the coronavirus. And you can believe what you want to believe and you can tell people what you want to tell them, but you're not telling them all the truth. So I'm actually going to uh, see if either any of the officers want to come back on that. I don't know if uh, anybody does on I'm the programme. Councillor Cotty, if you wish. Thank you very much. If you'd like to go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Gary Wood. Yeah. So, so thanks for your question, Councillor Hollis. Um, in the last um, capital programme report that we that we brought to committee, I think we did recognise in there that it was a that, that it was a two year program and that some of the schemes would carry over into the next year. So we we did we did include that in the in the previous um, committee papers, and I, and I think um, you know a combination of the impacts of the of the virus and also the significant flooding that we had over that winter period uh, has meant that schemes have been put into this year. So all of the schemes that you've listed and schemes in other members areas are still very much uh, in the programme and will be delivered um, during this this financial year. Quite clearly, um, the impacts of the COVID virus were not just on our staff, they were also on the supply chain. So there was um, significant difficulty in getting materials and plants were actually closed down. So, so the tarmac and other materials were not available. In, in our locality during the early stages of the This of is the absolute lockdown. rubbish. How can you blame COVID? COVID came in in March. This plan was from eight from May to May. So you, you lost a month. Councillor Hollis, can you in. stop talking, please? It, Gary Wood is trying to respond to you. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Please continue. Yeah, so it's just really to assure that all of the schemes that are in the last time's programme are still very much on our uh, on our delivery programme for this year. And I, I don't know whether there's some merit, Councillor Cotty, in, in just asking Doug to um, just just to just to confirm that as well and, and talk about the plans for this year as well, the delivery plans. Thank you, Gary. Uh, Doug would, Doug Coots, would you like to uh, make a comment? Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, just to. Uh, pick up on on a couple of points that uh, Gary's just raised. Um, the program was over. Uh, it started over the, the the two years into this year. It, it is unfortunate that a number of schemes got deferred in March because of uh, issues with COVID. It meant very uh, very early on our supply chain um, had issues with continuing delivery. We have we programmed all of those schemes into this year. Uh, so we haven't just dis discarded them, they have been brought into this year. Uh, we are working very hard, the supply chain is back up and running, we are reprogramming uh, all of the surface dressing, the micro asphalt programmes together with the schemes that are in the 2021 um, report that we presented today. Uh, there are going to be difficulties with the social distancing and the way that we now have to work. Um, but we are working very closely with the supply chain to make sure that we do our utmost to deliver the programme throughout the rest of this remaining year. Doug, could I ask you, um, does the uh, way that you are now into work uh, increase the cost of doing the work? Uh, that's a fair question, uh, Chair. Uh, what we are doing, because quite rightly so, we are working a different way in terms of the way that we operate uh, our vehicles and how we get people to site, etc. And, and as everyone's aware, the, the guidance is constantly changing from the government and we're, we are constantly reviewing that. What we, we set out to do was uh, during June, the capital programme was restarted in earnest. We have used all of the schemes in June as a pilot to monitor whether there are additional labour, plant or uh, and or material costs throughout June. Uh, obviously, June is just finished. We are working on the analysis of the delivery of June uh, and we will be discussing with the relevant um, officers like Gary and his team and yourself as to what that shows up going forward and what impact that may have on the, on the remainder of the programme. Thank you very much, Doug. I've got uh, four hands showing. Um, the top of the list is Councillor Pauline Allen, please. Thank you, Pauline. Thank you. It's a very small point, but I'd like to thank the council for the creation of two taxi car park ranks that I've spent a lot of time trying to get established 
and it will please me and the taxi drivers greatly when this is done. But I'm pleased to see it's on the list. Thank you. Thank you, Pauline. I've got next is Councillor Jim Creamer, please. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> thank you, Chair. Uh, along with along with Pauline, there's a taxi rank going into Cartnell as well. So thank the office for that. Well, I was going to thank the uh, the staff in general. I mean, one of my schemes has been delayed on May's Avenue, partly because of the weather, not just flooding, just the heavy rain itself is actually yeah. in May's Avenue, where they started at the finish. And I don't know if it's going to happen now, because this week they were supposed to do it again, but the weather has been funny here. And that brings me to my uh, question or point more, more, if you like. It's already been said that it's going to cost more because of the ways of working. And I am just a little bit worried about cost cutting in the future. I know you haven't gone through the budgets, any emergency budgets or anything yet, but I do think as a committee we ought to be pressing the government for actually extra cash because it's going to cost a lot of money to keep doing the same things we're doing now, let alone improvements. So in general, thank the staff. I know they've worked hard. It's not just been flooding. In my area, it's been the rain itself. Without the flooding, it's delayed everything. And I know they've started schemes, stopped schemes, again because of the weather. So thank them for all their hard work. But the future does concern me a little bit, and I think we need to put pressure on the government. So that's my political point for the day. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> thank you, Jim. I can tell you that uh, this year's budget is 55 million for highways, which is 5 million up on what we did previously. And I believe that the government in the last few days have told us there's going to be some more funding coming, hopefully for the highways. As soon as we know, we will let people know um, that we've got that. Um, so the next speaker I've got is Councillor uh, Guilfoyle, please. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, uh, I, I accept that uh, over the, the last uh, few uh, months and longer, we've had difficulties in uh, delivering a lot of a lot of our services, flooding, general rain, and all, you know, latterly uh, COVID-19. Um, clearly, uh, we accepted at, at the previous meeting about the programme from last year being two-year programme. Um, and I'm just wondering whether uh, you'll, we will be able to deliver the £55 million programme that you've got, um, and whether you ought to be, say, coming up front and saying that, look, this is a programme that we expect to deliver and hopefully it will be done within, you know, the next uh, two years, as opposed to sort of saying we're going to get all this uh, done over the year period. Predominantly because I don't know what the total of the outstanding programme from last year is, but clearly, you know, you're talking 55 million this year plus what's outstanding. So an another request from me would be is, um, is it possible that we can actually, because I know there's places in my area that have been put by, and I've accepted the reasoning behind it, because you can't take, you know, you can't get roads done when it's uh, raining heavily, you know, you, you, and I think even members of the public understand that. Um, but it would be good if we could actually see, and I'm probably asking it so I don't have to go back and look at all the reports, but a, a paper with all um, the outstanding uh, programmes to be done, uh, with that updated so that we, we've got an idea. Because clearly I've got residents who are saying, well, you actually, we had letters delivered saying this was going to be done. It's now not going to be, when is it? And I just, so it would be good, I think, for all members if we could have that updated and, and the totality of what the financial impact is over the year. Um, my other my other thing while I'm on is is is, is about the report in general and, and obviously we've seen the uh, additional monies that's been given at 30, 31 um, for sonic ways and, and other additional ways uh, to get people uh, to uh, moving about as opposed to using uh, cars, etc. Um, I, I know some of my colleagues have, have put in uh, sort of bids uh, for their own areas, for cycle routes, um, etc. And I know the amount of money uh, from the briefing that we update that we had from uh, officers on, on, on Monday was that the totality of it, although it's half a million pounds, it doesn't go a long way. Um, but I've got a lot of members wanting to know exactly uh, what areas have been considered and are going to be put forward. And I was led to believe that that announcement was going to be made uh, in our meeting that was going to be made today. 
Um, uh, for example, I know clearly Liz Plant in our area has put forward a number of areas for cycle routes and uh, really wanted to know whether they've been accepted or not, or whether they're going to be considered within the second tranche of money, is the uh, 2.293 million, which uh, we've been earmarked for, and I know you've got to put bids in um, for to get get the money accepted. So the, 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 the two things, other than to say that, you know, uh, Gary and his team, just to thank them, again, we had some flash flooding in, in my area uh, recently, and Gary uh, and his team and Sue responded very well, and I know that the residents uh, are very happy with the way in which uh, they, they perform. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Glenn. Um, we do have uh, cycling infrastructure on the work programme for September, uh, but I'm going to ask Gary Wood if he would respond to you, please. Thank you, Gary. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Councillor Guilfoyle. Um, so just to start off with the idea of sending out a, a list of outstanding schemes, we, we can certainly um, do that. Um, and in terms of the cycling infrastructure, um, we've recently had some feedback from the DFT around the schemes, but we're waiting for some more detailed uh, feedback on the tranche one uh, of the active travel fund. So when we when we get that more detailed feedback, we'll be able to um, then communicate with members as to um, you know which schemes we're um, we've got approval for, and then we'll get further information, I guess, then around tranche two as well. I think in terms of the delivery of the capital program this year, it is a significant challenge, and we've been meeting with Via about that challenge, and I know Via are very keen to press on and deliver absolutely as much as possible, and bring in an extra resource as well. But I think there is an intention to have a review of the programme in the autumn uh, to see what progress has been made, because obviously, the, as we've already described, there's new ways of working um, being utilised in in here. Um, and, and so the, the I think the proposition would be that we'd review the programme in the late autumn to see um, what's been delivered and, and what, what it's possible to deliver for the rest of the year. And again, uh, Councillor Cotte, I wonder if there's some merit in just asking Doug to speak about the the, the deliverability of the of the total programme at the moment. And the only other point I would make is um, the part, a large part of the 55 million, 20 million of the 55 million, if you like, is relates to the Gedling Access Road scheme um, as well. Thanks, Gary. Yes, if Doug would like to come in, I'd be appreciative. Thank you, Doug. Okay. Uh, thanks, Chair. So, yes, we are uh, very aware that we do have a challenging programme to deliver this year. Uh, as Gary just mentioned, we are really keen to work with Tarmac uh, and their uh, suppliers as well to make sure that we deliver the full programme. Uh, we are finalising at the minute with uh, Tarmac the surface dressing and the micro programmes and will shortly be in a position to confirm when they will be delivered. It's likely to be during uh, August and September. Uh, and we will obviously let all members uh, know about those uh, reprogrammed dates and we will update and republish the quarterly uh, map that we've had in the past about deliverability of schemes. That That is coming shortly. Um, but we, as Gary mentioned, we're very keen that we work together to do a, a full review of the programme uh, in towards the, uh, during September as such to see how well we've kicked it back into action as such and what, how we feel we can deliver it. Uh, as I say, we're really confident that we can work with our partners to actually deliver all of that programme. Um, but it is right that we do a proper review of that uh, in, in a couple of months' time to see how, how well the progress has, has recommenced as such. Um, but happy to work with the members to actually update them on how that progresses. OK, thank you, Doug. Um, I've got three speakers still. I've got um, Councillor Bruce Lawton next, then Councillor Philip Rostance, and then Councillor Gordon Wheeler. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bruce Lawton. Yeah, thanks, John. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, uh, just a point, really, Glenn. He does say in paragraphs one, two and three at the beginning of the papers that explains the difficulties in delivering a um, the ITM budget. It's not something you can just uh, guarantee on because there are obviously uh, 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 issues like weather which affect it. I mean, we've had we had four months of rain, for example, um, in this year where it never stopped raining every day. Um, it, well, you can't do surface dressing in that. And I presume a lot of Tom's uh, 
shortfall is surface dressing and uh, you can you can lay it if you like but it won't work and so you, you you'll end up uh, with a, with a bad service um doug uh, just really a, a, a um one is a complaint really um it's about the we're doing a lot of surface dressing um and it's about the speed of which we um hoover up the spare chippings Unfortunately, we've got a lot of idiots on the road who um, who um, decide that they are going to um, uh, do above 20 miles an hour going over new chippings and are throwing stones up and onto people's windscreens and breaking windscreens. Um, uh, and I know they should be following the regulations as per the signage, but I think we could alleviate the problem a little bit more if we... Um, more quickly um uh, i know you have to run a certain amount of it in but keep the roads um swept it's just a point really it's um and uh, and uh, I, i'm i'm sure everybody that in uh, today has 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 been uh, affected affected by that i'm not against surface dressing i think it's a really good idea it seals the road for 10 years and allows you to be able to spend the money more effectively. The last point I want to make is, is thank the team, really. Um, they've done some work. Uh, they resurfaced a, a stretch of Grassthorpe Road in Sutton-on-Trent. Uh, the lad that was running the scheme, he came from Lincolnshire. You pinched him from Lincolnshire. And he was really, really good. He engaged with the local population and sorted the job out. So, um, so if you could pass my thanks on. Uh, to the team, uh, I would most appreciate it. Thanks, John. Thank you, Bruce. I'm back on. <laughs> Disappeared right. for a while. Yeah. Okay, the next one was uh, was it Councillor Roston? So I said thank you. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Uh, yeah, firstly, just going on uh, what what Councillor Lawton's just said about the the chippings. Again, I've got a few roads in my area that would uh, appreciate an extra sweep. So thank you for raising that, Councillor Lawton. Um, but I just wanted to offer um, Councillor Hollis just some reassurances as uh, one of the county councillors in, in Hucknall that a lot of the roads, uh, if not all of the roads that you've mentioned uh, in your list, I've already received uh, updates from officers giving me some re revised dates for when those works are going to be carried out. So rest assured the works are going to be done. Any people who have contacted me, I've updated them. I've not heard from, from uh, District Councillor Wilmot, but he's more than welcome to count, contact me with, with any of the concerns that he's had, and I can offer him some reassurances directly as well. Thank you, Councillor Rossen. Councillor Wheeler. Thank you, John. Much appreciated. Uh, the point about sweeping up loose shippings is made, so I'm not going to repeat that. What I would actually say, look, if, if you've got any issue, why don't you have a word with Duck Coops, Sean Parks, in uh, in budget that's what i've been doing and they've actually been saying to me at all times well give me updates this is what's happening this is when the program is going to be built in we've had issues under covid 19 you can't get away from that but they have right. reprogrammed the works for later on this year in fact as we speak today one of the roads in my division is getting resurfaced which is put back from early on this year so to, just enter into dialogue with them it doesn't write leaflets on. gordon it yeah. doesn't write leaflets sorry Thank you. Well, well, Thank you, Councillor. I'm not involved in the conversation. I just simply say, talk to the officers. They are there to help you. Doug and his team are great. Councillor Wheeler, you've gone silent. Is it, are you? Leader, that, amend, that amendment hasn't gone through because I discussed it with Ian Patchett. So we've agreed something for later on this year without troubling the committee today. So it's a question of just keep the lines of communication open with VIA and, and our officers at the County Council, please. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wheeler. I'm sorry about that. I was on mute again. OK, we've lost Councillor Creamer. Would you want to wait, uh, members? We're happy to for Councillor Creamer to come back. OK, if you just hold on for a moment then, please. Thank you. 
Yeah. We'll find out how he's going to vote as well, if that's okay. If he can't get back on the screen. Just like to say, Chairman, that uh, my uh, connection just froze up, and and I uh, then I got back on, but it was a long process. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, John. We did get your vote though from Keith, and he's doing the same now with Councillor Creamer. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Yeah, I'd sing to you, but it might drive you all away. Probably Phil could. It's the Madonna headset, John. I think it's. Uh, <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. Still not got him. I'll give it just a bit longer. Yeah. Oh, we're going straight through to his answer phone, apparently. So, ah, there's a phone call coming in. So. Well, we've got, we, we could sing one song, John. It wasn't your, your birthday yesterday. We could, uh, yeah, no, of course, no. <laughs> <laughs> Many I know. I know what. Yes. Thank you. I know what the next question will be, and I'm not telling you. <laughs> Phil, you're the, only, you're the only musical one amongst us, Phil. So don't embarrass us all, please. Yeah. <laughs> we we think uh, Councillor Creamer's back. Are you with this Councillor Creamer? Yes, I've just come back. It uh, came up with error and switched itself off. It's taken this long to get back on again. <laughs> well, while Bruce Lawton was doing it, did the same to me. So I think there's a bit of a thing going around. So okay, we've um, completed the questions and etc on item seven so we move to the vote so i need to ask you if there are any votes against please no, i'd like to abstain mr Chairman. okay i was going to ask next on abstention so councillor hollis you're abstaining any others um i'm presuming then is everybody else in favor of the recommendations i can see no Nobody against. OK, thank you. So one abstention and the rest is in favour. Thank you very much. So we now move to item eight, which is the update on trading standards and community matters. And can I ask Derek Higton, please, to present this? Thank you, Derek. Thank you, um, uh, Councillor Cotty. Um, so this report, um, members, is um, the latest in uh, the usual um, uh, uh, series of uh, uh, communities and trading standards update reports that we provide um, to members. It covers uh, much of the usual territory um, that the reports uh, normally do uh, and you'll see from it that um, uh, trading standards in particular, uh, despite um, corona virus related uh, logistical and staffing difficulties uh, and, and they're the obvious ones, have been able to um, continue with some um, business as usual work, uh, which I think is testament uh, to the professionalism of the service um, and the team uh, and the report um, uh, describes um, much of that activity for members. Uh, likewise, uh, the team, uh, uh, the communities team has also managed um, the COVID-19 community fund, which has um, successfully dispersed around about half a million pounds uh, thus far uh, to affected communities um, around the county and the report highlights that, uh, along with uh, some of the work that we've been doing uh, around um, Armed Forces um, VE Day uh, and the forthcoming VJ Day, which is, takes place on the 15th of August, I think it is, um, in uh, uh, later this summer. Uh, I'm more than happy to answer any questions uh, or receive any comments that members may have. Thank you, Derek. Any questions from any members at all? Councillor Hollis, thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Just a request for information from uh, Mr. Hickton with regards to the communities fund that we've dished out to with regards to COVID. Um, I'd, I'd like, um, as a member, and I'm sure all the opposition members particularly would like this, 
um, all applications submitted to the County Council um, successful and un unsuccessful with, a, I suspect, a reason why they've either been approved or rejected. Um, and I'd like that to include the total requested and the total they ended up receiving, which I'm aware is sometimes different. Um, and how soon would you be able to get us that information? Uh, I suspect as the lead member for National Independence, it'd be appropriate to send it to me and I suspect the lead Labour member on this committee. Um, thank you. I shall ask uh, Derek Higton. I um, don't think so there's a problem, Tom, but I'll ask Derek. Yes, happily, we can happily um, supply that information to members. And just, Thank you. As, and just as a comeback, Mr Chairman, as a supplementary yep. would be, um, obviously we've still got some of the fund available. Um, do, does the County Council hope to dish this out? And if so, when? Um, and because uh, obviously I'm aware that some, some of the money was directly for frontline COVID stuff and we are starting to come out of that now. So I presume there's going to be a bit of a broader definition of what the groups we can give it to potentially with the remaining funding. Thank you, Derek. Um, so we're, we're currently giving consideration to um, the extent to which um, there's continuing demand um, for the fund. Um, uh, applications that we've um, received, we've received a, um, um, a rush of those in the first few weeks of the fund in March uh, and April in particular. Uh, they've since slowed. Uh, significantly. So we're currently looking at how we might best um, apportion um, the funding and, and the extent to which we might make best use of the um, monies, whether that's through the uh, continuation of the Communities Fund scheme or via um, uh, other means. What's also in our uh, minds, certainly from an officer perspective um, and, our, and a capacity perspective, is the need for us um, to also um, get on to supporting the outstanding local improvement scheme capital funding round um, that we've paused temporarily whilst the relevant officers um, have stood up and managed the communities fund um, as well uh, and we started to receive quite a bit of interest from um, applicants for the LIS capital grants um, around when the county council is, is going to be able to consider um, those schemes so one of the issues for us um, uh, is the extent to which um, we uh, can move uh, on from the communities fund into um, active management and early management of the um, apportionment for the local improvement scheme capital round um, because we're keen to get that in front of members for uh, the confirmation of decisions in September and October of this year if possible. Thank you Derek. Okay well Councillor Guilfoyle. Thank, thank you Chairman. Uh, yeah uh, welcome the report. Glad to see um, on page uh, 140 the uh, illicit tobacco and uh, Cubis in particular um, going uh, before the courts in September. Uh, again, you know, a lot of work uh, is needed around uh, illicit tobacco still. Uh, actually, John, it's a, a new issue that's arising and, and the government are, are introducing the uh, trials on uh, e-scooters. And I wondered what uh, council's position was uh, in particular on the introduction of e-scooters. I'm a bit wary personally. Uh, I've seen uh, accidents uh, occur and I've seen uh, what's happened. I know that they're arguing that they're going to be for 16 year olds and upwards. Um, they they are illegal currently until Sunday. Um, and I just wondered what the view was and whether we're, you know, because I would hate to see them piloted here personally. Uh, knowing some of the things that's gone off with them. And I just wondered what we were doing about that, if at all, anything. Well, I can answer that, um, Glyn, but the answer is um, we're doing nothing at the moment. Uh, we are having a look because uh, the city have contacted us about it, but I have the same concerns that you're expressing now. So um, it's something that we will take forward. And... Um, I suppose it, when it's in this, if it's in this report, I don't, I don't remember it. Anything in there? It's sort of highways issues, really. But um, as I say, we'll, we will look at it and reflect, and we'll go back to the city when we've considered it. We've only just had something from them, so we haven't made any decisions at the moment. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, yes, Kevin. Thank you, C Councillor Greaves. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, just an observation, and um, it's it's about the sale of nitrous oxide cylinders. 
which no doubt I think every councillor will have seen uh, these being thrown about all over the streets. Uh, are we doing anything, is Trading Standards doing anything about the sale of these? Uh, are, are they being found? I know that can be uh, obtained off the internet and there's very little that you can do about that, uh, I imagine. But are, are there any shops that are selling these uh, cylinders to our youngsters? And uh, are we looking into that at all? Thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you, Councillor Greaves. Um, obviously, Mark Walker gave his apologies this morning, but I don't know if Derek knows the answer. And if not, I'm sure we can get an answer. So I'll pass over to Derek. Thank you, Chairman. Um, we'll uh, we'll take that away, and we'll in the next um, update report, Councillor Greaves will provide uh, a commentary on the, on um, our perception of the issue in Nottinghamshire uh, and how we're responding to it from a trading standards perspective. Thank you very much for that, Derek, because I think it is something that we need to be looking at because uh, the same as I said, the amount of uh, cylinders now found on our streets uh, is certainly a, a problem brewing. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. I've got nobody else showing to speak and I'm just testing you again because I didn't propose the recommendation earlier on. So I'd like to propose the recommendation, which is it, we consider the updates and highlights and any actions required. That's the recommendation at the end of the paper. So I'm happy to propose that. Can I have a seconder, please? I'm happy to second that, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Handley. Um, anybody voting against the recommendation? Can you see everything OK? Uh, OK, that's unanimous then. Thank you very much indeed. So we move to not, item nine, which is Nottinghamshire County Council, Mansfield Road, B6030, Clipston and Kings Clipston, 50 mile an hour speed limit order, 2019, number 3308. Uh, I think Mike Barnett is presenting that to us. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, so this is a... Uh... Uh, an objection report to a proposed speed limit order on the B6030 Mansfield Road between Kings Clipston and Clipston. Uh, the outstanding objection is from the Parish Council and that's detailed within the report and our proposed response. It's worth noting that Councillor Pett, the local member, had a preference for a 40 mile an hour on a short section. We responded to the reasons why that wasn't achievable in this case, uh, but he did not object to the proposals. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mike. Any speakers, any questions? OK. I th think we're all ready for voting, I think, on that one, aren't we? Yep. Anybody against? No abstentions? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, item 10 is the work programme. Any questions or comments on the work programme? Vaughan, Vaughan, uh, Councillor Vaughan Hopewell, please. Thank you. How are you doing, Vaughan? Can you get on? I'm all, I'm all right, right. Um, it was item nine, uh, actually. I raised my hand because I wished to speak on that item before the oh. vote. Um, is it too late to come back to it? Uh, well, you can make a comment, but we have we have gone through it. Um, yeah, I OK. Think. So if you want to make a comment, feel free. Yeah, it's just a comment. Right, basically, our, our division, Council of Rights and my own division, actually um, borders onto Clipston. And during the COVID crisis, we've noticed a lot of cars are actually speeding up, as other members will do in their own areas. We have got the police involved because the speed is becoming excessive. And we just wonder if we can actually monitor this uh, from the county council's point of view, because as this traffic comes down through Clipston, going into Forest Town, the speed's excessive. And although the police are involved with radar guns, etc., cetera, um, we just feel that it's not going quick enough. To, well, not quick enough, if you know what I mean, but we're not having enough progress. And so if the county council could monitor this situation with a view to reducing the speed along the Clipston Road into Forest Town. OK, thank you uh, for those comments. What I'm going to ask is if Gary Wood would contact you um, as we move through that paper and then see if he can point you in the right direction or help and support you with that problem, if that's OK, okay with you. you. Okay? Yes, yeah, thanks very much, Chairman. Thank you. Are, you. are you OK with that, Gary? 
Absolutely happy to do that. No problem. I'll, I'll contact you later today. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Lawton and then Councillor Guilford. Thanks, John. Um, Gary, the, that is a problem for every, most councillors. Um, uh, just to, you know, Vaughan is absolutely right. It's not just Vaughan that needs a, an answer to that. It's most councillors, but I'm just feeling... John, it's a question of you, really. Um, Doug did not respond to uh, three councillors who brought up the issue of um, of gravel um, on uh, surface dressing. Um, I, you know, I left it till the end of the meeting, but it's it does need he do, we do need a response from him. Thanks for bringing that up, Bruce. Uh, you are correct. I do have the same issue in my my patch, but I just normally report it to the uh, the, the local manager. But if Doug would like to say a few words, I'm happy for him to speak. He's got his hand up. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, apologies. I did stick my hand up, but it obviously wasn't seen and it came down itself. So um, I'm happy to pick that issue up. But you're quite right, Councillor and Three of you and your colleagues have, have raised this as an issue. It is part of the process. We do have a process that when working with Tarmac and their supplier in terms of the sweeping. Um, I will go back to Tarmac and, and highlight the fact that we should have a review of how quickly we are doing that and how often we are doing that. Uh, and I'm happy to do that. And uh, it's, Councillor Cottage just said, if there are particular areas, by all means, uh, feel free to contact me or members of our team uh, and we will look into that. But I will go back specifically and talk to Tarmac about the frequency of sweeping. Sorry. Gary, Gary Wood. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Cottage. Can I just say on the from a road safety and speeding perspective, we're actually doing a, a campaign at the moment on social media and through other channels just to remind all road users, um, cyclists, walkers, um, drivers uh, about speeding and also just around staying safe. There's a, there's a lot more cyclists out on the network. There's quite a lot of pedestrian activity and, then, and they're not used to many cars. And as the as the network's getting busier, we're, so we're, we're putting those reminders out, uh, also reminders about school crossing patrols and, and MOTs on vehicles. So there's, yeah. there's seven different elements to that and they're, and they're going out um, this week and into next as well. OK, thank you. Um, Councillor Guilfoyle, I've got you with a hand yeah, up. It was, yeah, it was just saying, you know, I know not to be too formal, but could we put the uh, e-bikes uh, on the agenda? Um, so it doesn't drop off because I know obviously we would be interested in what the government legislation <coughs> says. Um, but if we could put it on the agenda, then at least you know we've got it there to remind us. Because um, I think also it'd be interesting to monitor uh, the program as it's going through uh, the trials. Uh, and I think the same for the what Councillor Greaves about at the nitrous oxide cylinders. Because as I say, it is a particular issue that's happening in works up currently, and it is a prescribed substance if it's being used it's one of those uh, that is banned but the difficulty is it's used in cooking um, which is why you can purchase them uh, online uh, but in reality if they are used uh, for uh, sniffing as they're doing it or ballooning I think the terminology is um, then uh, it is an illegal substance. Thanks Glenn I'm just looking at um, uh, Derek Higton so I'm going to ask him I don't see there's a problem but I'll just ask him. Yes, we'll, we can incorporate a, a, um, um, a response on both of those issues um, in the next Community Safety and Training Standards Update report. We'll make sure they're covered. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else on the work programme then? We did get diverted. My apologies for not being perfect at picking everybody up. But I've, I've only got nine faces on the uh, screen and they do bob around a bit. Um, Gary, did you want to come in? You've got a hand pointing up in the air or are you okay it's a failure to lower my hand so okay. that's another goal it's another goal to derek in our ongoing competition okay thank you okay um so we're happy with the um work program the work program is agreed and considered to be given to changes which the committee wishes to make so are we all happy with that I think so. Thank you very much. So I formally thank you and uh, bearing patience with the system. I'm slowly getting the hang of it, but thank you very much to all of you for your contributions today. Cheerio. Thank you. Meeting closed.